<laughs> Welcome back, folks. Again, uh, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host of the Oregon Voters Digest. Hope you enjoyed the first half hour. Well, now that what we now is that uh, we've got a, an old friend who's been around uh, for quite some time. I'm talking about Ron Buell. Remember the last time he was here, we talked about Columbia River Crossing. And as you can see, Columbia River Crossing, CRC, is all over the media nowadays, especially here locally. Uh, we, are in a, in a we are in a recession, folks. And I, I won't get, in, get into the whole issue back in, in Congress and whatever, but I'm thinking about it from a local perspective aspect of it. What are we going to do? Do we, uh, we instill a need, if you will, uh, responding to the whole issue of, of transportation here within here, the Pacific Northwest, and more specifically, here in the city of Portland, the state of Oregon, and Washington, you know, right across the way there. So I've got Ron over here now, and we're just going to jump right into it and have him just give us an update, go wherever we want to go there, and I'll just ask questions to Courtney. Well, well, quite, well, quite a bit has happened in the 60 to 90 days since we talked last about this subject. Mm -hmm. And the, the main thing that I thought was interesting that happened, and it, all, it was not covered in the press, like the recent stories we've seen from Willamette Week and the Oregonian, mm -hmm. this was uh, kind of downplayed by everybody. But uh, Kitzhaber and uh, uh, leadership in the Democratic and Republican parties had this joint memorial to Congress and to the President that they uh, proposed in the Oregon State Legislature. Had no money attached to it, no money for construction at all for the Columbia River Crossing. It just said, we memorialize Congress and President to support the Columbia River Crossing and to finance it. Well, they couldn't even get that out of committee. And the reason was, surprisingly to me, mm -hmm. was that the Republicans finally caught on to uh, the huge expenditures that are going on under the name of the Columbia River Crossing. Katie Iyer Brewer, who's okay. a, a Washington County Republican, uh, led the opposition in, in her party uh, uh, on the the two, she was assigned to both the committees. It was uh, House Economic Development and Transportation, and then okay. the Rules Committee. And and she did her homework, and she figured out what Ted Wheeler was saying on the front page of the Oregonian a couple days ago, mm -hmm. which was that the uh, tolling uh, revenue sure. bonds are uh, backloaded mm -hmm. and ridiculously exp expensive. In order to get the money for. Uh, uh, from the tolls for construction, that's $1.3 billion up front. They have to go and sell the uh, bonds to the Wall Street bond buyers. And they want to keep the tolls low up front as kind of a way of tricking the Washington voters who, the who, who have to. Uh, the Washington voters have to uh, support this thing. In November of 2012, they have to um, pay for operating funds for the light rail transit, and they're not inclined to do that, and they're not in favor of huge tolls. And so in order to keep the tolls down low so they could sell it to the people in Washington who don't want to have to pay those huge tolls mm -hmm. to commute here, uh, in order to do that, they said, we'll back load the tolls, and so they'll go up uh, rapidly in the in the last 15 years of the bond, the, it's a 30-year bond they're talking about to get the 1.3 million, because they backloaded the tolls, kept them low up front, they had to pay 2.7 billion dollars in interest on that 1.3 uh, billion over the 30 years, right, right, right. and the collection costs, because what they're going to do to collect them, they're not going to have toll booths out there to collect the tolls. They're going to uh, you, you can buy a trans transponder if you're coming and going right. every day as guaranteed, a commuter. Guaranteed. And then you just, you know, you show your transponder as you go through and they collect the money from you once a month or something like that. If you're, if you're not a regular driver, they take a picture of your license plate and they send you a bill. So the billing costs over 30 years, 1.7 billion more. So you'd add uh, uh, 2.7 and 1.3 for the construction and 1.7 for the billing, bill, uh, and you come up with $5.7 billion over 30 years. So the tolls on that have to get pretty high mm -hmm. in order to pay that off from the tolls. And so the bond buyers would say, well, wait a second, you projected this uh, traffic to grow dramatically over the next uh, 30 years, and for the last uh, 
six years, it hasn't been growing. Mm -hmm. It's been going down. Now, there's a slight uptick when they were working on the Fremont, I mean, on the Glen Jackson Bridge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and people used the uh, I-5 instead because there was construction. They were doing some uh, work on the on the Glen Jackson. Uh, that happened in 2010, a slight uptick uh, in traffic in 2010. Mm -hmm. But every other year... Yeah, we got bicycle, we got light two, rail. Yeah, 2006, 2007, 2008, yeah. 2009, 2000, yeah. uh, those years were all down. Wow. And they made the projections, the 30-year projections, back in 2000, 2004. So they said, well, it's going to grow every year, <laughs> but so far... <laughs> it hasn't grown. It hasn't grown. So when they project how much money is going to be collected from the tolls, they have to say, well, we're, we're saying it's really going to grow like this, and it's going to be in a straight line up, and it, and they can't even get back to where they said it's going to be. Uh, I mean, it's almost impossible for it to grow that rapidly. You know and I know that Clark County is quite suburban, yes. and there's a lot of developers who build housing out there. Well, since the 2008-2009 uh, crash in the housing market because of the foreclosures and the interest rates and the, and the phony uh, mortgages that were put out there, who's been building housing? Well, almost nobody. So mm -hmm. Clark County was saying, well, next 50 years, uh, we're going to grow from 450,000 people to a million people by 2050. <laughs> Okay, so is that happening? Well, no, it's not happening. And so the other thing, the other calculation here is that gasoline prices have been going up, and that causes people to drive less, to take transit. And so you're looking at these uh, projections that say, hey, we're going to be able to finance uh, uh, $1.3 billion of this bridge based on toll revenues. The other thing that they didn't calculate very well is they said, oh, well, only 5% of the drivers who go across I-5 uh, will uh, choose to go across I-205 instead. Well, you know how easy it is if you live in Vancouver to get on that 205, mm -hmm. and you can even get on off of I-5 and go over and go across the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you're going to Clackamas County, if you're going to uh, yeah. Multnomah yeah. County, just bring take I-84 yeah. in. It's not so convenient if you're going to Washington County, right. but on this side of the river, uh, there's going to there's gonna be a certain percentage that, and what Wheeler is saying, and what the transportation experts who looked at it independently, Stantec is the name of the company that looked at the, at the projections for traffic, and they said, well, you have under-projected how many people are going to use I-205. So the, you can imagine you're in the bond buyer situation, mm -hmm. and, you, and here these guys want to get $1.3 billion from you from tolls, and they say, well, we'll raise them up as we go along here, and, and they'll get higher later. Mm -hmm. We'll backload them. And, mm -hmm. and, and the bond buyers are saying, well, we don't think you're going to get the money from the tolls that you project. So we're going to want to guarantee a guarantee from Oregon State and a guarantee from Washington State. And those guarantees will take place against the uh, future transportation monies that come in from the feds and that are paid out of our gas taxes. So you have to guarantee us that we'll be repaid on these bonds. Hmm. And the full faith and credit of the Oregon uh, Trust Fund for gasoline and the Washington Trust Fund for gasoline, the, <laughs> those gas taxes, the full faith and credit of that in the future would have to go behind this project. And so Ted Wheeler takes a look at it and he says, hey, it looks like Joe Courtright and these people like Buell who've been opposing this thing. He didn't use my name. He didn't. <laughs> uh, but the, right. the, the people uh, who were opposing this thing saying, this plan is not going to work, mm -hmm. and the bond buyers will uh, want to guarantee, and the state isn't going to want to guarantee it, and you, you've got a crazy plan here. And Wheeler is saying, yeah, you do. And yeah, the transportation numbers have not been going up. The traffic numbers have not been going up across the bridge. So that was real important for Wheeler to say to Kitzhaber and the leadership in the legislature, yeah. hey, guys, uh, 
your tolling plan here, which is to pay for roughly a third of the costs of this uh, project, is out of whack. So that, that was big news, and that's why it made the front page of the Oregonian across the top. But at the same time, what didn't make news was the Republicans figuring out that they'd been hornswoggled by Kitzhaber uh, on this project and refusing to pass out that joint memorial out of committee. And the, the, there is a group of uh, Democratic legislators who say, well, wait, the environmental assessment on this thing is all out of whack. And uh, we know that in North and Northeast Portland uh, that there is more air toxic and, and uh, more uh, air pollution coming out of more traffic. And, you know, the wind blows west mm -hmm. uh, from the freeway. And so people who live in Northeast Portland, the North Northeast Coalition, jumped up and down and said, well, wait a second, we don't want all those additional air pollution from all this additional traffic. Mm -hmm. Because what happens in the morning, in the a.m. peak, is people coming across that bridge from Vancouver to come to their jobs in Oregon, and we're talking about tens of thousands of people who do that. Right. Uh, those people are going to run into a real mess where the freeway narrows to three lanes coming into town on uh, uh, there at Del Delta Park. You know where I'm talking right, about? Exactly. Victory Boulevard there, yes, De Delta yes, Park? Yes. Uh, there were the car race track and, right, the, and right. the, uh, uh, the horse race track mm -hmm. are uh, right there. And so it narrows to three lanes coming into town in the morning. Well, coming across the bridge, there would be five lanes. And then there's two, two, two on lanes coming on from uh, um, from Hayden Island, where people get on the freeway there, so it gets 17 lanes wide on Hayden, Hayden Island, yeah, where you live. Yeah, yeah. 17 lanes, that's, you know, 800 feet across there, it's taking a real swath out of the community. And uh, the Safeway's going, and a, lo a lot of that stuff is going out there. Well, then, it's, uh, the Marine Drive over here is coming in with with another lane, and all those trucks coming off the Marine mm -hmm. Drive going uh, mm -hmm. south in the morning, yes going to join in and then so you really have about eight lanes mm -hmm. that narrow down to three in a space of less than a mile and a half and uh, so every morning traffic's going to come to a dead stop so when they did the uh, environmental impact statement Bruce, Bruce when they did it they said well we're going to speed cars up through the bridge impact zone so there will be less air pollution. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they're not going to speed cars up in the morning. They may speed them up a little bit in the uh, evening because you've got to go all the way down to Battleground before it, it gets down you know, to two, bridge, two lanes two lane and it really, yeah, right, really right, narrows. Right, right. It's quite, quite a few lanes going through Vancouver on on out. Mm -hmm. So it may go from six to four going north, that's not quite as bad as seven or eight to, to three right, right, going right, south right, right. in the morning. So uh, people are saying, you're not cleaning up traffic as much as you say you're going to, and therefore your claims that you're going to, by, by getting rid of this stopping and starting, um, that you're, those claims that you're going to lessen the air produce, uh, pollution, reduce the air pollution, reduce the air toxics. Well, what are we talking about when we say air toxics? Mm -hmm. What's that mean? That means the formaldehyde and the benzene that comes off of diesel fuel and, and right. gasoline, those are cancer.